I think that A, I do have an intro, and that B, not having an intro is my intro. Today we're doing Killing in the Name for Cucumber Cane, Broccoli Boris, and Rutabaga Robert. We'll skip anything having to do with C and put yourself in drop D. This song is chock full of goodies, including the very first thing that you get to do. This is one of the best parts about playing the guitar in drop D. Play a D chord, but let's leave the baby E string out of it, so just mute that. And now all the strings, except for the baby E string, equal a big, huge, humongous, giant drop D power chord. <laughs> stop it to make room for the bass. But when you do join back in, you're gonna play your low, now D string open three times, and then the regular usual D string 11-12, and then the G string 11-12, and you do that three times. Twice, three times. On the fourth time, you start the same. Once you get there, you skip straight to G12 and give it a bend. And that's one set of four, you do that twice. Here's the second set. And then you get to join in with the basses fun with on the low string, open, 13, twice, three times. And on the fourth time, you're gonna do your open, 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 but instead of 13 three times on the same low string, you're gonna do 13 once on the other D string, the regular D string, and you're going to give it a bend wiggle, a wiggle. So, once, twice, three times, fourth time. People who play the piano say that when they play Mozart, it's like finger zen, and this part is a really good argument for the idea that Tom Morello is the Mozart of guitar. You're gonna pluck your, you can pluck your low E string, and if you get, you know, kind of some more strings there, that's okay, because it's a drop D power chord, but your open low string, at all, and the A string 3-5. To get the true groove here now, you wanna do two percussive strums just down up. I just muted everything with my left hand, so so far we have open, A string, 3-5, shika. Then you're gonna grab the usual D string and go 3-4, and then your ring finger's gonna reach for A5. And now we have open, A string, 3-5, shika, D string, 3-4, A5. And now we're gonna switch to drop D power chord, so the low two or three strings, and we're gonna go Open, two, three, two, and we're gonna give that two a wiggle as well. And when the singing starts, it's the same thing, it's just a little quieter. you can achieve with a little mute with your right hand there. The next part starts just the same as the last part. We're gonna do our open low string or strings, followed by the A string, three, five, chica. But let's call this section the continuum of masochism. You let me know where you lie. We could stay on the A string and go up to the 14th fret, 13, 12. We could switch to the D string and then it would be nine, eight, seven. Or we could stay really close to home on the G string and then it would be 4-3-2. It's all the same notes. Since Tom's fun lies mostly in moving as far and down up the neck as possible, especially when not even necessary, and especially, especially when in just a tiny amount of time, I'm guessing that this is Tom, but you pick your favorite. And after that, you're gonna do drop D power chords. Open, open, two, three, two. Give that two a bend, it mimics 16th notes. And then pluck the two again. The second time's different. Lazy. 
And we're gonna play a C power chord. That's the third fret of the A string. Into the do what they told you part. This part has four levels of intensity. We're gonna grab a D octave chord. That's A string fifth fret, G string seventh fret. We only wanna hear those two notes, so lay any amount of the rest of your fingers down sloppily over strings. Uh, so when you strum away, we only hear two D notes. And this is level one. Down, up, down. Level two adds the strums in between with your left hand muting everything. So just squeeze when you want the notes to ring out on your down, up, down. Level three is gonna be that plus slide as far as down as you can. Level four, the very end, we're gonna do an octave higher than this octave chord on the 17th and 19th frets before we go to the next part, which starts on the same D octave chord you had going, you're just gonna strum it one more time. And then we're going to play a drop D power chord on the third fret, the fifth fret, and then one lonely C note on the A string third fret, which is nice for sliding right back into your octave chord. Three, five, C. The next verse is all the same, of course, except for that pesky thing he throws in there, which you can do either D string five, six, seven, G string five, six, seven, and then B six. But I believe Tom does it on A, 10, 11, 12, D, 10, 11, 12, G, 10. It's the same thing, but if you listen closely, it comes in after the D string portion of that riff, and you hear the fastest ever in the world. You hear that D string slide up as he grabs to catch that A string 10th fret. You pick your favorite. This one's obviously quite a bit easier. You end on your middle finger, and then you can kind of hopscotch over with your pointer finger to begin the whole thing, but... That's cer certainly someone's kind of fun, is what I was going to say. Please excuse me, a spam call interrupted our fun. Someday I will acquire a Digitech Whammy so we can do the solo justice, but for now we're skipping to four minutes and ten seconds where Tom says, this song's mostly in the key of D minor. Here's the D minor scale as octave chords. We're gonna start on the one we've been doing, A5, G7. I will call out the A string fret. The G string fret will move along in kind. Five, seven, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, and seventeen. But when he gets to seventeen, he does this kind of thing. So that's fun practice, trying to hit that tiny little target there, if you want. If you're playing along with the last 3-5-C section, you'll notice that there's one of them where it goes completely haywire. And I can't quite tell if it's the bass or the guitar, especially with the weird whammy you know, thing going on. Um, but I think one of them goes, instead of 3-5-C, 2-3-5, and it just sounds like your truck hit the you know thing in the parking lot that you didn't know was there in front of your car when you're trying to leave. I'm not going to do that, but you, but you can do that if you want. And it's just the one time. Or maybe it's something. Oh, I'm, I'm moving on. But once you've made your way through that part, you get to play the coolest chord in the universe. It's the Jimi Hendrix chord. It's D7 sharp 9. You're going to put your middle finger on the A string 5th fret. That's the D part. Your pointer finger on the D string 4th fret. That's still the D part. That's D's major 3rd. 
third F sharp. Then we're gonna add our ring finger to the G string fifth fret. That's a flat or a dominant seven. That's the seven part, but the pinky on the B string sixth fret is the sharp nine part. This is F, it's D's minor third, but since this is already a major chord, we can't call it D seven, the major chord minor third as well. So instead of calling it a flat or minor third, we call it a sharp two or a sharp nine, the next octave of two anyways. After you enjoy this for a while, switch back to your D octave chord. And then you do your as power chords, I believe, open, 13, and the song's over. And the video's over. I love playing that song. I hope that was fun and helpful. Thank you so much for joining me for this one, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.